Hey guys, this is Natasha with Team JBS and I'm here with another review, Indiana Jones, The Dial of Destiny, out now in theaters. I know I'm a little late with this. This review may contain my spoilers, so watch at your own risk. This latest installment, directed by James Mangold, has all the elements that makes a great Indiana Jones film. Is this a solid conclusion to a beloved franchise? Now that I've had time to process yeah no <laughs> the first 20 minutes was okay the climax and tail end was good the middle is where it gets a little murky for me <laughs> so let's start with the positives i did like the character development of indiana jones throughout the film movie you see him in his prime with a flashback where he is in present day which i think is in the late 60s early 70s in this case him embarking on one last adventure and then where he ends up at the end harrison ford is still charismatic as indiana sprinkled with some vulnerability with a twist of senior cynicism I wasn't expecting to, but I did get choked up a little bit at the tail end of the movie. Indiana and his quips were the funniest moments in the movie. Another thing I liked was the artifact, the Dial of Destiny. I'm not as familiar with that historical time period, but I am curious and I want to learn more. <laughs> it was cool that they are exploring the concept of time. I mean, time is you know, limitless and would you go back to a certain time period? The things that made other Indiana Jones movies fun to watch were present in this movie. There was at least one creepy crawly scene where I was like, ah, <laughs> you gross. I liked some of the cameos made in the film and I mean the cheesiness was there, but they didn't overdo it, which I'm very thankful for. The character Helena Shaw played by Phoebe Waller-Bridge and her teen sidekick Teddy played by Ethan Isidore. They were okay characters. I mean I had to be reminded though why Teddy was in this movie but then when he came in clutch I'm like okay that's why you're in the movie. Okay thank you. <laughs> what I liked about Helena was her connection to Dr. Jones. It was also cool that she was quick-witted, knowledgeable, and had fighting skills. The way that I felt about her throughout the movie varied. Initially I thought she was cool, but then she would do something that made me not like her, and then she would be cool again at the end of the movie. So if they were trying to do a spin-off with her in it, <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry but I wouldn't watch it. <laughs> the action scenes were for the most part cool like the beginning flashback action scene. The CGI was okay but then there were parts that wasn't syncing very well. There was a chase scene not too long after featuring a horse that was really cool. There was a moment in the subway where the timing was impeccable. That horse deserves all the props. <laughs> the final action scene was cool too. The common theme here is parts of the action scenes were cool. The rest of it, it was just too much and it just took way too long. I mean my main gripe about this movie were the action scenes. There was a car chasing scene that was just the worst of the bunch. I mean there was someone in that scene that had no relevance whatsoever that made the chase scene longer than necessary. Just, just why? That, no, just keep it moving. So yes, it is a staple for Indiana Jones to have long action sequences, but for me, especially in this movie, I kept saying in my head, we ain't done yet. I mean, I'm looking at my watch, Jorge looking at his watch, like what? I have been feeling this way about several action movies, including Fax X and John Wick 4, even though I just still enjoy those movies. So if they had just cut some of the action scenes for Indiana Jones, we could have had focused more on character development or at least have a tighter movie. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. And I say that for the other Indiana Jones movies too. Like some of those action scenes were just way too long. 
and you can get more generic with a Nazi villain. Mads Mikkelsen as Horgan Buller is still charismatic, but his performance felt muted. I mean, him and Harrison Ford did riff off of each other very well. And then you have Boyd Hallbrook as Kleiber, a henchman. I hope that pronounced his name right. He's another good actor that was underutilized in this movie. Like some of that character development could have gone to him. And then there's the character Mason. I mean, she was intriguing enough, but you could tell where her character would end up. Look y'all, this was an obvious attempt to get a cookie for finally including a black character and not just as background in an Indiana Jones movie. So the positive thing with this is I hope we get to see the actress Seanette Renee Wilson in more movies and TV shows because I think what little I saw I think she could do something with another show with better writing material too. Indiana Jones The Dial of Destiny is a movie that you can watch on Disney Plus <laughs> however you can also enjoy it in theaters. I will say this there was a little bit of emotional resonance because at the end of the day this is the last Indiana Jones movie. So that's it for me guys <laughs> please like and subscribe hit that notification bell button my rating for this movie would be a 6.5 slash 7 out of 10 it was fun but i could watch this as background and be just fine <laughs> let me know in the comments your thoughts on this film if you could go back in time to a major time period in history what time period would you visit if you could change your past what would you do it and what would you change? So thanks guys. I will hit you up in the next review. Bye.